Hello. So uh, today we will uh, go through some properties of uh, SAP.M.Table and um, understand that uh, how this particular table uh, behaves in a responsive manner uh, for the user on different uh, screen sizes of uh, different devices. Uh, we will also understand what are some key differences between uh, SAP.M.Table and uh, SAP.UI.Table uh, table control. Um, so let us proceed ahead. Uh, so what is an SAP.M.Table? It is uh, primarily used for displaying data in a tabular format uh, in a responsive manner. So the SAP.M library of SAP UI5, it uh, provides the required uh, features uh, to build a responsive UI. So uh, let us go through some of the properties of this table and understand that how uh, they enable uh, this SAP.M.Table uh, to behave in a responsive manner. So uh, here we have a simple SAP UI5 application uh, created in the uh, business application uh, studio of the uh, SAP BTP and uh, this is how uh, our uh, SAP.M.Table looks like. Uh, so it doesn't have much, it just have uh, all these uh, products which are being displayed in the tabular format. Uh, this is the view where we have the table control. Uh, we have uh, these uh, basic properties of the uh, table control set. So the items are bound uh, to uh, a JSON file with the product collection. And uh, these are the columns which we are displaying on the table. So uh, the first property which we'll go through is the um, min screen width property of uh, sap.m.column. So this property uh, basically determines the visibility of a particular column uh, based on the width uh, of the screen. So there are different values which can be set for this property, min screen width. Uh, the values which can be set are uh, phone, tablet, desktop, small, medium, large. So what happens is that uh, when the min screen width uh, property value uh, say is set to a desktop for a particular column. Uh, so what, what it does is uh, whenever the screen width or the screen size becomes less than the uh, screen size of a desktop, uh, that particular column is hidden from the user. So let us see this property in action. So uh, say for example, we go to the supplier column and uh, we provide the min screen width property and we mark the value as desktop. So what it will do is, uh, so here you see that uh, this screen is uh, the size of the desktop. So you can see the supplier column here. But uh, if I restore uh, the size of the screen uh, down, uh, we can see that the supplier column is not visible to the user anymore. And this is happening because we have set the min, min screen width of this particular column as desktop. So this is the impact uh, which it has on uh, the column. Going to the next property, uh, which is called demand pop-in. So this demand pop-in uh, property is used in conjunction with the min screen width uh, property. So demand pop-in, uh, we can uh, assign a value either a true or a false. So what it will do is uh, whenever the screen size uh, will go less than the size of a desktop screen, uh, this particular column uh, will not vanish uh, from the screen. It will move into the pop-in area of the table. So we will see this in action. So now when I restore uh, the screen size down, you can see that the supplier column has been moved uh, to the pop-in area of the table. So this is the pop-in area of the table uh, where uh, this particular column has been moved. Uh, why it has been moved? Because uh, the screen size has been reduced and uh, the demand pop-in property of this column has been set to true. So this is another property which helps uh, sap.m.table uh, to display data in a responsive format. Uh, another property which uh, we will check is the auto pop-in mode. So we'll set it to true here. What this property does is uh, whenever auto pop-in mode for a table is set to true, uh, it will first of all overwrite the min screen width and the demand pop-in uh, properties of the, of the column. 
as we can see here this property enables the auto pop-in behavior of the table if this is set to true it overrides the min screen width and demand pop-in properties of the sap.m. column so now now if we, if i reduce the size of the screen you can see that automatically it has taken some columns and it has moved them to the pop-in area of the table also it has nullified the impact of the min screen width and the demand pop-in uh, properties on this particular column right so now we'll understand that based on what uh, criteria it moves these columns into the pop-in area first of all what it does is it will move the columns to the pop-in area um, starting from the rightmost column when the auto pop-in mode uh, has been set to true for the table so if i re if i reduce the size of the screen you see that the price will move to the pop-in area weight will move to the pop-in area and first the price has been moved and then weight has been moved to the pop-in area starting from the rightmost column what we can do is uh, we can control uh, that which column moves to the pop-in area first uh, by providing some by assigning some importance uh, to these columns. so say for example uh, from if for the user uh, say the price column holds a higher importance what it will tell the table control that this particular column is of a higher importance so it will not move this column to the pop-in area so you see here that the price column has not been moved to the pop-in area now what it has done what it has done is um, the columns which are before the price column they have been moved to the to the pop-in area again starting from the rightmost column so you could see that the weight column was moved to the pop-in area first and the diamond then the dimensions column was moved to the pop-in area after that similarly so there are different values of importance which we can assign uh, to different uh, columns uh, another value which we can assign is low importance the if we set the value of importance to low what it will tell the table control that this particular column is of a low importance so move this column to the pop in area first so here you can see that price and dimension price has been moved to the pop-in area and then dimension have been has been moved to the pop-in area now we will see another property of sap.m. table uh, which is called fixed layout and we will see how it has the impact on um, the responsive behavior of the uh, sap.m. table so there are three values which can be assigned to the fixed layout property of uh, sap.m. table and those values are uh, the true false or strict so when true values assigned what it does is the uh, horizontal layout is determined by the width of the table and the width of the columns and it is not dependent on the content of the cells of the columns so values within the cells do not have an impact on the width of the columns what it does is this allows for better rendering or faster rendering of the table because the width of the table can be determined by the first row of the table itself so we will see this as well in action uh, let me remove the auto pop in uh, property here and uh, we will provide the fixed layout property so default value is true as we know that So here you can see that even though um, 
the descriptions of uh, some of the products is uh, is beyond the width of the product column uh, but the the content of the cell is is not having an impact on the uh, on the on the layout of this particular table uh, now if i uh, change this particular value to false so the table will not be rendered in the fixed layout mode it will be rendered in an automatic uh, layout mode uh, what it will do is it will uh, so in this case the contents of uh, the cells uh, will have an impact on the um, on the layout of the table so here you can see that uh, the content of the table is taking its uh, space and that is having an impact on the uh, width of the table and the width of the column so uh, here you can see that uh, when the when this property is set to false the width of the table is determined by the contents of the cells uh, the width of the column is determined uh, by the widest unbreakable content of the cells this makes the rendering slow since the browser has to go through entire contents of the cell to determine the width of the layout so th this is a difference between uh, these two values for the fixed layout property here we can also assign uh, another value which is strict what it does is uh, when we have the uh, value uh, of fixed layout uh, as strict and uh, say if we have uh, only few columns here uh, let me comment out the last three column and uh, for these two columns which we are displaying on the screen uh, we'll provide some width say 12 rem for this and uh, we'll provide the same value for the supplier column as well so now you can see that uh, because we have provided a fixed width value to the columns and uh, the fixed layout mode of the table is set to strict uh, what it will do is uh, it will assign only the specified width to these two columns and the, for the rest of the empty space uh, the table will introduce a placeholder column so this is what it does in the strict mode now if say for example we have uh, multiple columns and uh, the, the total width of all the columns um, occupies the entire width of the uh, table then the placeholder column is is not visible but uh, if the total width of the columns is less than uh, the uh, the area occupied or the space occupied by the table uh, then the empty space is occupied by the uh, by a placeholder column so we can see it here as well it's written when the value of this property is set to strict uh, and width of each column is specified uh, and not the auto value uh, then an additional placeholder column is introduced to ensure that each column occupies the specified width only now let me just uncomment uh, these commented columns yeah now we'll go through uh, another property uh, which uh, helps to render the data on the screen for sap.m.table in a responsive manner uh, say on on small screen sizes uh, which is the growing property so the growing property is is borrowed by sap.m.table from uh, sap.m.list based control uh, so what it does is uh, when the value of this growing property is set to true uh, it ensures that not all the data from the model is displayed to the user at once rather uh, either a more button is displayed to the user uh, which user can click and uh, then request more data to be displayed on the screen uh, or user can scroll down and then more data will be rendered or displayed to the user on the screen so we'll see this property in action let me also remove the fixed layout too. so we'll set this value to here and uh, 
So once we do that, uh, so here you see, if I scroll down, here you can see that only 20 rows are displayed to the user uh, at once. And then uh, when user clicks on the more button, then more data is loaded from the model. So this is how the growing property works for sap.m.table. Along with the uh, growing property, uh, we can also use the growing threshold property and we can specify uh, a threshold here, uh, which will ensure that only those many number of rows or those many number of data uh, are retrieved from the model um, at a particular point of time. So if I put growing threshold, if I provide a value here, So here uh, the user will be displayed only 10 rows at once and then upon click of the more button another set of 10 rows of data will be retrieved from the model and displayed to the user. So this is how the growing property and the growing threshold property uh, are used in conjunction with each other. Now uh, if there is, there is another option which we can provide uh, which is called growing uh, scrolled load. we set this value to true this will ensure uh, this will ensure that um, more data is retrieved or additional data is retrieved from the model uh, when the user scrolls down the screen uh, rather than clicking on the more button uh, this property again is used in conjunction with the growing property so when the growing scroll to row load is true and uh, i will remove this and growing property will set it to true. These two properties are also used in conjunction with each other. So here you can see this is my scroll bar here. Okay, now if I scroll down, see the scroll bar is becoming shorter and more and more data, additional data is being retrieved from the backend model. So this is how the growing property and the growing scroll to load property work. So these are some of the very uh, important and key properties of sap.m.table which are used uh, for the table to behave in a responsive manner. Now uh, we will understand uh, what are the key differences between uh, sap.m.table and sap.ui.table. Uh, so first of all sap.m.table is the default table in the SAP Fury framework uh, and SAP.UI table is not. Uh, SAP.M.table is primarily used for responsive table design uh, whereas the SAP.UI.table uh, does not support the display of data uh, on mobile phones. It only supports display of data on desktop and tablets. Okay. Uh, there is a restriction, uh, uh, there is a limitation for sap.m.table that it should be used only for small set of data. It should not be used uh, to display or uh, to retrieve and render large set of data from the backend. Uh, whereas sap.ui.table is designed to handle the large sets of data. So the, there is, uh, there has been a guideline which is provided which says that sap.m.table should be used only if the number of rows to be displayed to the user uh, are less than 1000. Okay. Whereas the sap.ui.table can be used to handle large set of data. So if the number of rows uh, which are to be displayed on the UI screen uh, in, the, in the form of a table are more than 1000, say 2000, 3000, it is advised to go for sap.ui.table rather than sap.m.table. So this is what I wanted to cover in this uh, particular video uh, to understand that what are the different uh, properties of sap.m.table and some other m sap.m uh, controls uh, which enables uh, the sap.m.table to behave in a responsive manner